I don't think any of us can really imagine what an ordeal like that would be like to be captive uh, by someone for even a week, let alone 18 years in, in JC's situation or nearly 10 years or over 10 years uh, in the situation in Cleveland. And we're very fortunate that uh, we got that news right before the Hope Awards and it really illustrated that hope is alive and that is the main message that we want to send to families uh, who, are, who are grieving right now uh, around the world, who, whose loved ones are missing, that hope is there still and faith and keep that. And you never know what kind of break is going to come. It's very fortunate for these three women in Cleveland. And, uh, and now there's, a, there's a, a big road ahead of them. Physically, they're, they're now back together with their families, but emotionally, intellectually, they need a lot of support and help to get through these next several months and years. Absolutely. Um, you've been involved in the national organization for a very long time. I'm sure there was talk last night uh, about how Cleveland police handled these cases. What was said? Well, there's a lot of discussion about what's going on, and, and I think it's, it's not a bad thing to do. Uh, it may be Monday morning quarterbacking, but in this case, law enforcement needs to do that on a regular basis, to look back, look at the things that they did right, look at the things they did wrong, and figure out how to make those corrections for future cases. I, I can't comment on what the Cleveland police were able to do or not do. Um, I, I'm not privy to that information. Uh, we're just, at the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, we're just excited that these three women, and four in fact, a little girl, um, have been reunited with their families and, and mm -hmm. hopefully will have a, a fruitful life ahead of them. And just tell me why you've been involved with this organization for such a long time. Uh, I'm a parent and I think it's every parent's nightmare to think of what happened to John and Rave Walsh's son Adam many years ago. Uh, they needed to turn their anger and frustration uh, into something positive and they created the National Center almost 30 years ago in their garage and um, they did the right thing and they had to send their grieving process to something that was positive. Once you become a parent you, you realize that they're, they're living my nightmare of something happening to my child and so mm -hmm. that's all the impetus I needed for my wife and I to get involved with the National Center many years ago and continue working for their progress.